Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to show you why you cannot have pair production in empty space. With other words, when a photon comes along with sufficient energy, it cannot spontaneously on its own, without any other interference or interaction, turn itself into a particle and an antiparticle. Matter of fact, this is the particle and that's the antiparticle because we have an electron and a positive electron, which is called a positron. Something must happen. There must be some effect from some other nearby nucleus or something like that in order for the photon to turn itself into a pair of particles. The reason for that is that both energy and momentum must be conserved. In other words, if you have a photon coming along here that has a specific amount of momentum equal to the energy of the photon divided by the speed of light, and it has a certain amount of energy, the energy of the photon is going to be equal to h times the frequency of the photon. It then turns itself into two particles, through the transition from photon to two particles, energy must be conserved and momentum must be conserved. But in other words, in the x direction, the momentum of the photon before the pair production must equal the momentum in the x direction of the two pairs of particles. If p is the momentum of the positron and p is the momentum of the electron, assuming to be the same, and assuming that the angles must be the same, otherwise momentum cannot be conserved in the y direction since the masses are the same, that means that the total momentum after the pair production must be 2p times the cosine of theta. So the total momentum after the collision is, or not collision, but the pair production is 2p times the cosine of theta, which must be equal to the momentum of the photon before the pair production. So what we can say is that if energy is conserved, energy initial equals energy final, we can then say that energy initial is equal to h times the frequency of the photon, and energy final must be two times the mass of each, of each particle times the speed of light squared, two, but it's not going to be the rest mass, so we have to have the adjustment for the relativistic speeds times m sub naught times c squared, where gamma is equal to one over the square root of one minus v squared over c squared. So that is a certainty that energy must be conserved via this equation. Now let's go ahead and conserve the momentum. We can say that momentum initial must equal momentum final. The initial momentum must therefore equal the energy of the photon divided by the speed of light, which is hf divided by c. And the momentum after the collision must be two times the momentum of each particle times the cosine of theta. Now, of course, the momentum can also be written as follows. The momentum can be written as the mass times the velocity, and the mass can also be written as gamma times the mass at rest times the velocity, which means that h times f divided by the speed of light is equal to 2 times the momentum, which is gamma times the mass of each particle times the velocity, times the cosine of theta. Now to write the equation in such a form that we can analyze it, we're going to multiply both sides by c, <coughs> excuse me, so we can write that hf is equal to 2 gamma m sub naught times v times c times the cosine of theta, and then we're going to multiply both sides, well, actually we're going to multiply the right side by c divided by c. And there's a reason why we do that, c divided by c, so nothing changes. So now the equation looks as follows. We can now say that h times f is equal to 2 times gamma times m sub naught times v divided by c. So what I'm doing is I'm writing this c underneath here. And then I have c squared times c squared times the cosine of theta. Now you may wonder, why did I do that? Well, first of all, when I go back up here, know that the energy initial must be equal energy final, which tells us that hf must equal 2 times gamma times the rest mass times c squared. If I now replace hf in this equation by this quantity right here, let's see what we get. We get 2 times gamma times the rest mass times c squared is equal to 2 times gamma times the rest mass times c squared times v over c times the cosine of theta. Notice that this is the same on both sides, so I can divide both sides by that quantity. That means 1 must equal the v over c 
times the cosine of theta. Is that possible? Again, our presumption is that this happened in free space without any other interaction, that both energy and momentum was going to be conserved, but look what happens. For 1 to be equal to this, that means V over C must equal 1, and the cosine of theta must equal 1. Let's first look at the cosine of theta. If the cosine of theta must equal 1, that means theta must equal 0, which means that both particles should be moving straight ahead without diverting from the initial path of the photon side by side, which of course cannot happen because then the positron and the electron, the particle and the antiparticle, would be in the same location and they would immediately annihilate each other. So that could not happen. Secondly, V over C can never equal 1 unless the particles move at the speed of light and we know from Einstein's special relativity that V can never equal C because then the particles would attain infinite mass. So V over C must always be smaller than 1 and the cosine of theta can also not be expected to be 1 therefore this cannot be a true statement and therefore we can never have a pair production in free space. Another way of looking at that is the following. For momentum to be conserved before and after the event, some of the momentum must be carried off since the particles themselves can never carry off the full momentum of the photon, that the, the momentum of the photon before the pair production is greater than the sum of the momentum of the two particles after the production, there must be something else like a, like a heavy nucleus to take some of that momentum away. So as the photon comes very close to the nucleus, an event can happen that the nucleus takes part in the pair production event that some of the momentum of the photon can be carried over to the nucleus and the nucleus can carry that momentum away and the remaining momentum which is less than the momentum of the photon can then be carried away by the particle and the antiparticle. That's the only way that event can happen. Some other objects such as a heavy nucleus must be present for the photon to cause a pair production like that. And that's how we prove that.